Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Equityverse. Today, we're gonna provide a general market outlook on Tesla. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. If you're a long-term viewer of the channel, you'll know that I am uh, a long-term Tesla bull. I, I really do believe in the future of Tesla, but I also like to always weigh the downside risk. And what I think is going on right now with Tesla is something that I experienced firsthand back in 2014, 2015, and 2016. So let's take a walk down memory lane and see if we can come up with anything that looks somewhat familiar. We're going to talk about the upside potential by Tesla over the next few years. We'll, of course, talk about the downside risk as well. Now, with any idio, with any stock, there is the idiosyncratic risk of that stock, right? And and what I mean by that is that there's the market, there's the S and P 500, which tends to outperform people that are sort of stock picking, right? And the reason for that is there's this idiosyncratic risk associated with individual stocks, where on any given day a stock can sell off for any reason related specifically to that stock, but not the broader market. The stock can also be subject to the broader market, right? So sometimes stocks go up because the broader market is going up. Sometimes individual stocks go down because the broader market is going down. But occasionally, a stock will go up even when the broader market is not, or a stock will go down even when the broader market is not. I think the idiosyncratic risk with Tesla right now is not nearly as high as it was back in 2021, right? I think that what you're essentially witnessing right now is what I witnessed and what confused me back in 2014, 2015. So essentially what happened in 2014 and 2015, I was very confused related to the, 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 the stock price of Tesla. It seemed to me that they were on the right track. They were, you know, seeing major accomplishments major advances, but I could not for the life of me figure out why the price wouldn't go up. And it feels like a lot of investors are feeling that today, right? You see all these other stocks, right? Apple and Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, um, plenty of stocks that have had no problem putting in new all-time highs. Absolutely no problem putting in new all-time highs. But for some reason, here we are, three years after Tesla topped, and for some reason, it still hasn't put in a new high. What's going on? What I came to realize back over here is that everything that I thought that was so bullish and should lead to the increase in valuation of Tesla got priced in in 2013. So this move over here, while Tesla was doing great things, and it seemed like the price should be going up, it was just consolidating after this major move, right? The market looks ahead. The market looks ahead. It doesn't look to see, you know, it doesn't look around right now and say, oh, well, this is what Tesla's doing. It looks ahead in time. And the investors in 2013, I wish I had been one of them, but I was in, I, I had actually just started grad school. I was my first year uh, doing my, my graduate degree in nuclear engineering. My very first year, I was really bullish on Tesla, but I didn't really have any money to put in the market. And so, you know, I watched this move happen and I felt helpless. And then over here, I'm like, well, why can't it go up now? And it was just because it was digesting the 2013 move. I think we've seen something similar happen. And there's actually a lot of similarities if you really look closely. And we're going to talk about this, some of those similarities. So there was a major move up in 2019, 2020, and 2021. Now, has Tesla accomplished anything in 2022, 2023, and 2024? Absolutely, right? I mean, it seems like they've come a long way over the last three years. Now, of course, there's going to be haters, right? Of course, there's going to be haters that say, say all sorts of things. But the reality is, is Tesla, you know, they've accomplished a lot. Um, I do think they're more than a car company. They've accomplished a lot. 
And it has not really worked out well for people who fade Tesla over a very long period of time, right? It just has not worked out for those people. Yes, there are times when the market goes down. And I was fortunate to be on the right side of it when it went down over here. But my biggest mistake was not turning bullish on it right here. So I turned bearish on Tesla in 2022. My mistake was I didn't turn bullish on it in early 2023. So what I said was, and I and I did videos on this, and of course I mentioned it in ITC Premium, was that this was sort of a second opportunity, right? A second opportunity if you miss the low at 100, which I did. I missed the low at 100, but I sure as hell didn't miss this low at 140. And so what I think is happening now is that there's a lot of there's been a lot of great news for Tesla, but the reason it hasn't gone to new all-time highs is because it has been digesting this move right here. That doesn't mean that it can't go to new all-time highs, right? In fact, if you look at what happened by Tesla in sort of this cycle over here, and you take sort of a fib retracement, you can see that from the top here to the capitulation low, Tesla rallied up to the 1.618 fib by June 2017. How many comparison videos have we made for crypto compared to 2016, 2017? Right? Think about Ethereum. Think about that video I just did on Ethereum, the comparisons to 2016. Think about how similar the dollar, the rally by the dollar right now compares to 2016, and the rally by the long end of the yield curve compares to 2016. It's all very familiar. It all it's like it's like a carbon copy almost. Everything is almost the same. The dollar's rallying, the long end of the yield curve is rallying. Um there's even some similarities in, in politics as well. Uh, and I look, I, I like to stay away from from politics, but look, there there are a lot of similarities between, you know, this and this. And what's interesting is the 1.618 just so happens to be six hundred dollars. Now, I would go as far and, the, and we're going to talk about the upside potential. We're also going to talk about that on set of risk. Full disclosure, I have a position in Tesla. I'm long-term bullish on it. I'm not really looking for major drops, although I would happily buy, you know, buy if, if we do get drops. But I would say that is the, you know, sort of the upside potential is if it follows early 2017. Now, what's interesting is you can actually see a lot of similarities. This capitulation wick here, a rally to a lower high and then a bleed, and then a major rally up. Now look here. You get your capitulation wick, a rally to a lower high, and then you get this bleed here, and then arguably we're in this leg right there, right? That's arguably where Tesla is right now. And I've been talking about this for a while, but I just wanted to do an update, right? That's arguably where Tesla is. Now, right now, Tesla's at 213. The earnings report just came out, and it, I, I believe Tesla, I, I, I didn't check it, you know, within the last couple of hours, but the last time I looked, it was up like 10, 12% or something after hours following the earnings report. So if Tesla can ride that momentum, then it could potentially put in new all-time highs in 2025. Maybe even earlier than that, but you know, by 2025. That top there was about halfway through the year. The actual new highs occurred, you know, like April of 2017, right? So I wonder if that's what's happening right now, if Tesla is repeating this. Now, here's something that as an investor of Tesla, I have to come to terms with, right? The infrastructure for electric vehicles still leaves a lot to be desired. I know because I own an electric vehicle, okay? It leaves a lot to be desired. I do think it's only going to get better, though. I wonder if Tesla will eventually check back in with this trend line before a major move higher, right? Now, I'm not talking about a move to $400, $500, right? I mean... 
you know, that would just be getting Tesla basically back up to its all-time high, which plenty of other stocks have already been able to do. I don't think anyone here is going to be, you know, dunking on on Tesla haters if Tesla goes back up to $400, right? I mean, so what? You know, Meta was able to take out its all-time high long ago. So was Microsoft, so was Apple, right? So that's not really dunk worthy. What has to happen for a major rally like that, right? I'm not talking about a 100% rally. I'm talking about a 1,000% rally. Is that going to happen soon? Well, as much as I would like it to happen soon, and as much as I could get on board with Tesla going to new all-time highs, it's hard to see it going up a 1,000% within the next couple of years. But you know what? I, I could see a scenario where whenever it tags this trend line, could be the point at which it begins another major rally, right? Like that and that. So whenever that happens. Now, what's interesting, first of all, we have to admit something. No, no one here can possibly predict when Tesla, if and when, it will tag this trend line. First of all, this is a trend line. They're dubious at best. Tesla probably doesn't care about this trend line. I am just putting it out there because it, it's visually appealing to look at, right? But the reality is, is no one knows. But what I would say is that two things. First of all, if this cycle repeats, Tesla could put in new all-time highs before tagging that trend line. Second of all, if you look at this trend line, Tesla did not tag the trend line until the trend line was above the capitulation low. You see that there? That capitulation low looks a lot similar to that capitulation low. In fact, the when it tagged the trend line in May of 2019, it basically retested the higher low. And that tag of the trend line occurred about one year later after it, it passed the capitulation low. So one year after this trend line will pass the capitulation low would put it sort of, you know, near the end of 2027. Near the end of 2027, which is interesting because the end of 2027, if you then draw the line across, that, that has you retesting that low, which is what happened over here. Now, is that possible that, you know, that, that Tesla could do something like that? And obviously there's, there's, you know, there's always recession talk. But you have to remember one thing about recession talk, right? Yes, the, 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 we will have recessions. But sometimes when you get recessions, the stock just puts in a higher low. You know, when I was talking about Meta on, um, you know, I talked about Meta a lot on, on ITC Premium. And I was actually really, really bullish on it when it went below 100. And what I said back then was that this is a great opportunity to pick up Meta. Because it just seems insane that it was trading at less than hundred dollars when it's you know with, with the the cash flow that it had, and now it's gone to new all time highs. So yes, at some point there will be a pullback and a recession, but Meta's probably just going to put in a higher low, right? I would honestly struggle to see it ever taking out that low, at least in any reasonable investing time frame for for you know for investors, right? So there's always a possibility that Tesla could do something similar, right? Where you know, yes, there's eventually a slowdown in the economy, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has to take out the prior low. It could, but it doesn't have to. So I would say that the more likely scenario is that it eventually tags this trend line, but that could be years from now. And if the last cycle is any indication, it could go to new all-time highs before that happens. Now, we have to talk about the other side of it, right? There is the reality of, you know, you, you have an inverted yield curve, and we've had an inverted yield curve for a long time, right? And normally, they precede recessions, right? Normally, that's what happens. So it's not like you can look at the chart and say that it has to repeat itself. Exactly. Because in 2016, you know, there, there wasn't an inverted yield curve like there is today. So there is a chance that Tesla deviates from that pattern. It's always possible that, you know, it, it gets this rally, but instead of going up to a new all-time high, you get a slowdown in the economy before that, and then it drops, and then it goes through, you know, it, it sort of deviates from that process. So that's why I'm saying right now, I can't possibly know 
right? I can't possibly know when that's actually going to occur. The trend line right now, coincidentally, is at around $60. And once upon a time, you know, back when it was Tesla was $100, $60 seemed like a potential outcome to me. But at this point, it's, you know, while it's always a potential outcome, I mean, any price is a potential outcome because, you know, when, when markets go down, a lot of times it's because people are forced to sell, not because they want to sell, right? They're, they're, they're getting margin called somewhere else and they have to go sell something to cover. Um, but I look, I, I generally think this. I mean, I, I do think that the risk for Tesla right now has nothing to do with Tesla. It just has to do with the market risk. But I think Tesla is undervalued with respect to the market, right? If you actually look at Tesla divided by the S&P, you can see that it, it's actually been trending down for a little while. And you know what looks really familiar here? You see that? You see that low there and then a slightly higher low? Doesn't that look really similar, right? A low and then a slightly... It looks really similar to me. So I think that there is a good chance that Tesla will outperform the S&P going into 2025. Whether that's on an S&P rally or an S&P crash is going to be up for debate. But again, remember, the market needs a reason to go down, not a reason to go up. That doesn't mean the market's not going to give you that reason. But until you see initial claims printing 300K, it's still not really considered recessionary by the standards I would say. You know, I mean, it doesn't mean they're not going to get there, but I don't think they're there yet. So I think Tesla is just going through this long consolidation period um, where eventually it likely will sort of blast off to a new level. But I would guess that any rallies within the next couple of years, while likely could take Tesla to new all-time highs, they probably wouldn't take Tesla, you know, a thousand percent higher. Okay. If you're looking for something like that type of move, my guess is that you're going to have to wait a few more years. I don't think that really should present an issue. I think it just represents an opportunity, right? You know, if Tesla does rally back up and then it kind of comes back down here against the S&P, you know, by this point, by later in the decade, the infrastructure is going to be better. Hopefully, the inflation concerns are behind us. And, and by that point, I think Tesla could get, you know, a, a much larger aggressive move to the upside. And perhaps, you know, when you compare it to the S&P, maybe it'll even go tag this trend line again. Um, but that's a long way to go. I think it's also worthwhile to look at S&P, or sorry, the Tesla year-to-date ROI. Look at 2024. And let's compare it to prior election years. 2016 looks pretty close, actually. Right? It looks really close. 2012, you could see, like... In both cases, the last month or so of the year, they went up. If you take the average of 2012 and 2016, you get this, right? It's kind of interesting because that's basically right where Tesla is. So perhaps this is what Tesla will do. Something like that is is always, uh, you know, a potential outcome. And you know, basically for it to get back up there, it would have to get back up to that level, which for Tesla... Um, where would that correspond to? Basically, it would correspond to getting back up to 260, 270. So if Tesla follows the average of 2012 and 2016, it would get, be getting back up to 260, 270. 2020 is obviously a lot higher, but that was one of those major impulsive moves, kind of like 2013, right? So you have your 2013 and your 2020, which are these major moves, after that, right after that, your 2014, if you look at like your 2014 and your 2021, those kind of look similar, right? The year after major impulsive moves, if you look at 2015 compared to 2022, eh, 2022 wasn't so great for Tesla. Um, but if you look just generally at, at those election years, Tesla's doing what it normally does. So it's kind of an interesting position for Tesla. Because, I mean, it seems like it's sort of set up to do what it did at the end of 2016 and and sort of get this rally. 
But there's something else we have to consider as well, right? And that's the fact, and it's kind of like with Ethereum, how I compare Ethereum to 2016 and 2019, because 2016 and 2019 were when ETH Bitcoin broke down, just like 2024. As much as it makes sense to compare Tesla to 2016, you could also make the case that why not look at it through the lens of monetary policy and say, what if Tesla is, is following this, right? Where, what if this move, you know, what if instead of looking at, at this move here, right? I mean, you know, we just spent the first however long part of the video looking at that and comparing it to this. What if instead we should be looking at this and comparing it? Is that a likely thing to, to sort of, is that something that could be worthwhile to think about? If you look at Tesla in 2019, it sort of sold off into, you know, as the Fed paused, just like it did over here, right? It sort of sold off as the Fed was paused up there. And then it started to go back up after rate cuts, just like it's starting to go back up here following rate cuts and even sort of anticipating them a little bit, just like it did right there, right? It went up in June, July, and then the Fed cut late July. So it's, it's doing something almost identical, right? Where it sells off into the pause, rallies back up as those rate cuts arrive. Now, in 2019, Tesla continued to rally until the recession, right? But even then, even in the pandemic-induced recession, that recession low was still a higher low. Right. So I don't think anyone's denying that. Yeah, like we're probably going to eventually have a recession. And, you know, it could be it's probably going to be brutal is, is the reality. Like it's probably going to be brutal whenever it happens. Hopefully we still have some time. You know, we still have the uninversion of the three month and the 10 year yield to go. So perhaps that will give Tesla some time to sort of get ahead of that. But this is what I'm talking about. Right. Even when you get these major crashes, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to take out, you know, that low there. So I, I, I think that's what's kind of happening with Tesla right now is that those rate cuts are coming in, right? The rate cuts are coming in, but it's not obvious that to the market that there's a recession right now. So if there's not a recession right now just yet, that's the reason why the dollar is rallying, right? That's the reason why the long end of the yield curve has rallied so much is because the Fed's cutting, but maybe they shouldn't be is kind of what the market is thinking. Right. You know, is growth going to start moving quickly again, causing another wave of inflation? But for Tesla, it's a good thing. You know, rate cuts are a good thing. You know, if you go out and buy a car, um, obviously a lot of, you know, a lot of people buying a car are going to be subject to, you know, to the rate that they can get. Right. They're going to want to get a good rate on their car loan. And so rate cuts are, are a good thing for companies like Tesla. And you can see that it went up after those rate cuts over there. And it looks like it's starting to do something very similar. So yes, at some point in the future, during the rate cutting cycle, there's at least a 50% chance there's a landing, right? And I don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know when it's going to happen. But I would say whenever it does happen, it's probably going to be a good opportunity. I can't concern myself, you know, with exactly when it's going to happen. All I can do is say this. I missed the low there. I made sure to make up for my mistake there. I've picked up some since then too. I'm going to stay bullish on it. If we get a big drop because of a recession, I think it's just going to be an opportunity. At some point in the future, probably many, many years from now, Tesla will likely tag that trend line again. And if and when it does, it's likely going to be a great opportunity to get into Tesla. I don't know when it's going to be. I wish I had a crystal ball and I wish I could tell you. All I know is I have a position in Tesla. I hope for the best. You know, I hope for the best that it, it'll continue to rally. If it doesn't and, and you know, if the long end of the yield curve keeps going up and it starts to really weigh on the S&P, like some of the other stocks, and that starts going down, that could drag Tesla down with it, right? So you could have a scenario where Tesla's outperforming the S&P, but it's still not reaching its full potential because the S&P, the whole market as a whole, is dragging Tesla down. That always is a possibility. So 
I would just look at it like that, right? You know, come up with like a DCA strategy. Um, and I don't even know if I can rotate that, but um, come up with a DCA strategy and and say, you know what? Let's hope for the best. Um, at some point, it'll tag this trend line. And when it does, that'll probably be a great opportunity before another major impulsive move up. And that's the way I'm going to play it. All right, that's the way I'm going to play it. Um, you know, today, Tesla's at 213. I hope I can look back at this video in a decade and Tesla's a lot higher than it is today. I hope I can. You know, my guess is what's going to happen is this consolidation period will just continue with potentially higher highs, you know, potentially a new all time high. There is a chance of a new low, um, but, you know, things would have to get pretty bad to take out that low there. I mean, they'd have to get really, really bad. And, you know, if this low here is any indication of what happened to that low there, then it doesn't get taken out, you know. Um, but, I mean, as an investor, it's important to understand all scenarios and to just say, yeah, like, I mean, that would be sort of the worst case, right, is if it goes back down to that trend line before going to new all-time highs. But if it did that, I think you would just get a big move out of it as the Fed would just turn the money printers back on. I mean, that's the reality, is that at the end of the day, Tesla is probably just going to grow as a company as the years go on. And, um, you know, if there is a drop, <laughs> the Fed will likely come to the rescue. Um, so, yeah, those are my views on, on Tesla. I'm curious if there's any other interesting charts we could look at uh, just while I have this stuff up. Uh, let's go look at monthly returns really quick for Tesla. Um, so, in... Yeah, I mean, so far in October, it hasn't really been doing that well. Um, but that should change uh, following earnings, you know, after you know after tomorrow. You can see this, so far this month, it's actually down 18%. Um, so I actually used this opportunity to, to pick up a little bit of, of Tesla. But a lot of October has actually have been red for Tesla. For some reason, it's kind of interesting because the October has mostly been red for Tesla. Uh, November tends to be okay, right? The average return in October is only 1.5%. The average return in November is about 10%. Um, if, if Tesla could go up 10%, that would get it back up to that 260, 270 from the 230, whatever it's already at, um, following earnings. If we look at quarterly returns for Tesla, um, yeah, I mean, the last time, if you look at 2016, it ended up being positive. 2020, it was positive. 2012, it was positive. Let's look at what's the best day to buy Tesla if you're going to DCA it. Friday, which is interesting because normally uh, for the S&P, it's, it's actually Monday, right? So it's actually really, really interesting that for Tesla, it's Friday, right? If you, if you actually pick up uh, or if you go over here to the S&P, the best day to buy is Monday. And that makes sense because the S&P generally goes up, right? The S&P generally goes up. So, you know, buying it early in the week tends to be the best. But with Tesla, it's kind of different, right? It's kind of interesting that, and this is not my opinion, guys. This is based on historical results, um, based on a seven-day moving average. We can we can look at some other ones as well. Let's look at a 14-day. Does it change? It's still Friday. Let's base it on a 30-day. Still Friday. Uh, on a 50-day, still Friday. Based on a 90-day, still Friday. So basically, based on historical moves, the best day to buy Tesla, the best day to DCA it is on Fridays. So this is one of those things where like if you if you're just a Tesla bull and you want to blindly DCA it for the next 10 years, the next 5 years, what day do you pick? Well, this data would suggest Friday is the best day. Days since percentage gain. So the last time that the it's taken 272 days since the last time Tesla went up 30%. Right? 272 days. There's plenty of times where it only takes just over 300 days for it to do that. So it's kind of an interesting chart. Or sorry, that's decline, not gain. That's Tesla since 30% decline. Um, so it's been 272 days since it dropped that amount. Days since percentage gain, it's been 506 days since it went up 100%. Um, any other interesting ones to look at? Maybe look, we'll look at the Bollinger Bands. Let's go over to the weekly. Yeah, it looks like it's had some moves up here to the top 
top of these Bollinger Bands recently. Um, but nothing too, nothing too really that interesting, honestly. Um, if we look at, at the RSI of Tesla on the monthly, it's actually still pretty low. It's like 49. So it's still relatively low. What was it in, in into 2016? Right. Now 47. So it's not that much different than what it is right now. What was it in uh, 2019 after the Fed cut? And it went all the way down to, or before the Fed cut, it went all the way down to a monthly RSI of 37, which is actually kind of just where it went back in December of 2022. So anyways, guys, I've uh, rambled on long enough. Basically, long story short, Tesla in many, many years will likely be, I'm guessing, much higher valued than it is today. In the short term, as long as there's not a downturn in the economy, Tesla should continue to trend, trend higher as I think it's undervalued with respect to the S&P 500. If the S&P drops, it would likely take Tesla down with it. Although the minute Tesla, the minute the S&P starts going back up again, Tesla should continue to outperform. So those are my views on Tesla. I think it's lagged long enough. I think it should start turning around relative to the S&P 500 soon. Tesla USD is just going to be dependent on S&P USD. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, give the deal a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.